guys, it's Amanda from the Fiction Fairy, and today I am bringing you a book review. The book review is on Far From You by Tess Sharp, and it is going to be released on April 8th, 2014, and the publisher is Disney Hyperion. First off, the cover is absolutely beautiful. It is simplistic. It's adorable. I just, I loved it from the moment I saw it. It doesn't give away anything just by looking at it. You can't kind of look at the cover and tell what the story is going to be about. And I really liked that. It just, I don't know, it was just beautiful. It was just a gorgeous cover. I love how the lights are strong. It reminded me of maybe like nighttime on a Louisiana street and just lights being strung up and fun. And I just really just fell in love with the cover right off. Um, the things that I liked about this book were I liked the different layers that this book kind of had. It was kind of like a seven layer bean dip, you know. You get down, you know, to the sour cream and some people would just stop and be like, oh, forget it. This is enough stuff on my chip. But this book made you want to go all the way down to the seventh layer to get to the ground beef. No matter how far your hand had to go down, no matter how crazy you looked, no matter how much was stacked on top of your chip, because it was just that good. You just really wanted to delve into that seven layered bean dip. The things I disliked about it didn't necessarily have to do with the book itself. It had to do with the way that it was categorized. This is an ARC copy um, that I received from the publisher, but it's categorized as an LGBT book, and I think that it does it a disservice, although it does have clear LGBT themes within the book. I don't think that the themes are that, that they are so much that somebody who does not care to read those types of books or somebody who does not agree with that type of lifestyle would be deterred from reading this book um, if it didn't have that label. If it didn't have that label, I think that the LGBT themes would come. You would see them. They would go out. They don't take over the book. They don't hinder the book. They are not they're a central theme to the book, but they are not the book. So I think you could still read it even if you don't particularly care for those types of books or if you don't agree with that type of lifestyle. I think that you could still enjoy the story and you could still get something out of the story. So I think that by them categorizing it as an LGBT book, I think that it may detour some readers from reading it who otherwise would have really enjoyed the story and really gotten something out of it. The overall view that I had of the story is that it was just beautifully written. It's a story of two best friends, Sophie and Minna, and it's told in alternating perspectives um, of Sophie kind of going, she's had a couple of near-death experiences with her best friend Minna, and it goes from, you know, before to after, before to after. Um, her first near-death experience with Minna was the result of a car crash from Minna's brother driving and it left Sophie's body pretty much just crippled in, in constant pain from her legs and having to use a cane to her back. She was just in constant, constant pain all the time, um, which led to her uh, drug abuse problem of prescription medications. And so that's how the chapters are told of Sophie, before when she was kind of like highly medicated, after when she wasn't so highly medicated, before when she was highly medicated, after when she wasn't. And that's how it kind of tells the story of her and her best friend, Minna. Now when I first started to read this story, I had just read the synopsis. I had very little idea of what the book was about because the synopsis does not give a whole lot of way. So I kind of went into the book blind. When I first started reading it, I thought, okay, this is a contemporary, and you know, I'm really trying to read more contemporaries, this is fantastic. And then I was kind of like, huh, okay, I think maybe this is a mystery book, because it had a whole lot of mystery going on. I mean, you have just, Minna, Sophie's best friend, is just, she is shrouded in mystery from her life to the things that she's doing are just shrouded in mystery. I mean, there's things that Sophie doesn't even know. And Sophie is her best, like, ace friend. And throughout the book, you're finding out all these things about Minna, all these secrets she's been keeping, all these things that have been happening. And then at the same time, you find out about Sophie and the secrets she's been keeping, such as her drug abuse and what happens with that and how it comes out and what results from that. So you have, like, these... Layers are being peeled back on both characters, and then at the same time, the two characters are in a story together, and you're peeling back the layers on that. 
So it was like, wow, this is a real mystery story. This is this is awesome. And then it would go back to being a contemporary, like a coming of age contemporary. You know, finding out who you are, being okay with who you are, um, standing up for what you believe in, never backing down. You know, realizing that you know you're a strong person but also realizing that you still need other people in your life. You know, you can't push everybody away, realizing that there's pain in life and there's just certain things that you have to deal with, but that you shouldn't shut everybody out um, and keep them from loving you because you need that in your life. So it was just, it kept going back and forth, contemporary mystery, contemporary mystery. And I didn't think that I would like it, but I really did because it kind of kept you on your toes and it was like the perfect blend of two books. And then as far as some of you guys, if you're wondering how the LGBT kind of plays into it, which um, if those of you who don't know what that is, that is the <sighs> lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. So that means that this book has um, undertones, overtones, somehow plays into that, which it does. Um, I'm not going to give away how exactly it plays into this book because it is a key element to this book and what makes the emotion of this book so strong. However, those um, tones of that do play into this book. However, they are not the whole book. So please don't let that deter you from reading this book. But those um, undertones of the LGBT community are kind of what bind this together. Like this book was fantastic cookie and the LGBT was like the egg that was binding it together. It wasn't so much that you could taste the egg once you made the cookie, but it just gave it just enough to really make you feel this just raw emotion in this book. It was absolutely heart I mean I'm gonna start crying just talking about it. But it was absolutely heartbreaking. Um I just I felt so much for these characters and I felt so much for Sophie going through her drug addiction and what happened with that and how it affected her families and how it affected her friends because it absolutely affected her friends 100% and it really got Sophie into more trouble than she could have ever imagined. That is part of the mystery in which she's trying to get herself out of that trouble um, while trying to solve another mystery at the same time. This book has so much loss in it. It's not just the loss of people. It's the loss of innocence. It's the loss of trust. It's just it's a lot of loss in this book, but it also has a lot of things that are found. It's finding love. It's finding trust. It's finding who you are. It's finding yourself. It's really just finding your way. Um, and it, it was just an amazing book. It had twists and turns that I never could have expected. Um, you think you're like, okay, I totally know what's happening here. I, I know, you know, what person we're talking about. I get where this is going. You do not know where this book is going. This book is taking left, right turns, and zigzagging down the middle all at the same time. It was just that good. I hate to gush about it, kind of like be fangirling about it, but it was such a shock of a read because I really didn't know what I was getting into when I started to read it that it just captured me that much. It was just that good of a book. And... The way that it concludes was absolutely beautiful. It just it tied up the contemporary coming, you know, of age book with the mystery book just so perfectly. It was the end of the book is absolutely heartbreaking. And at the end of the book, you will see how the cover of the book plays into it. And it is it's just so beautiful how the author did it. It was just oh, I cannot get over it. It just it literally made me tear up because I could not believe just how beautifully written the cover is so weird that the cover was written so beautifully into the meaning of it inside the book and it will just it will break your heart a thousand times over um it's just it's it's just a wonderful book. I don't know what else to say about it. I just really, really loved it. I would absolutely recommend it to anybody who um, is a lover of contemporary, who is a lover of mysteries, anybody who's getting into mysteries or getting into contemporary. This is a beautiful bind up of both the genres and I would recommend it to anybody who loves um, Sarah Dessen or John Green. Now I have never read a John Green book however the hype on booktube, the hype in Goodreads, the hype just in the book world itself of John Green is that and then some and if you like The Fault in Our Stars I think that um, you would love this book 
because from what I've read, from the reviews I've read, from the reviews I've watched, this book is kind of along the same um, lines, minus like the cancer aspect, but along the same lines, just feelings, raw emotion, discovery, uh, with a dash of mystery put in there. It was just an absolutely wonderfully written, perfect book. I loved it. I'm so glad I got to read it this month. It really just kick-started my reading month of March, got me out of that February kind of slump that I was in, and I really just could not put this book down. I just absolutely loved it. So I hope that you guys will go and pick it up. If you don't already know where I'm going with this, I gave this a five out of five cupcakes, and you know that I do not give fives away on a whim. It was just that good of a book. And for me to give a 5 out of 5 to a mystery contemporary, that is also LGBT and I don't really read contemporary. Mystery kind of I read but not so much and I've never read an LGBT book. Um, that is saying a lot for me giving it a 5 out of 5 cupcakes. So absolutely April 8th if you guys can go pick up Far From You. If you have an arc of it, read Far From You. Um, if you've read it, if you want to read it, leave me comments down below because this is an absolutely terrific book. I wish I could give you more detail on the book without spoiling it, but almost everything you say will spoil this book. And the best part about this book is just going into it and reading it and letting it just unfold and blossom like the beautiful flower that it is because I absolutely loved and adored it. So thank you so much guys for coming by The Fiction Fairy and watching my review of Far From You by Tess Sharp.